Hi, everyone. It's Marsha Martin, the Heart Healer. And we're having a do-over day, and I could not be more excited. And I'll tell you why. Last week, I screwed up the controls, and so I taught the whole class, and nobody could hear me. So I taught it to myself. But we were talking about how to silence the inner critic. And always, whenever I have something, when I've channeled a message, I say to the angels, I really want you to bring to mind a time when this happened for me or someone else. Because I feel the stories, when we can connect through stories, make it that much more interesting. And we really get a hold of what they're wanting to share with us. And I really didn't have a great story for the inner critic. And no one had shared anything with me. And lo and behold, I screwed up. And my inner critic was absolutely hopping up and down so excited that it would get a chance to tell me oh you're stupid you see I knew you were stupid I always told you you were stupid and you couldn't do this why are you even trying to do this why don't you just give up you know no one wants to hear it anyway on and on and on and on and on and I realized well first of all hey I haven't really heard from that inner critic in a long time. How refreshing it is not to have that voice, to have the voice of encouragement. And then I got to apply the three steps that are going to be given to us in this blog post so that all of you can do what I did, which is to silence the inner critic. And nothing works as well as success. So because I used these three methods that I'm going to share with you in just a minute and really followed to the letter what they told me to do and didn't give up, my inner critic is now silent. I was successful and it's going to be much more difficult for my inner critic to get up ahead of steam and come after me again if I do make a mistake. Because guess what? I'm going to make another mistake somewhere along the way. I'm going to say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, get something not quite right. And it's okay. And it's okay for you as well. That's the thing that I need you to remember. It's okay. It's always okay. Even if you screw up, you are still perfect. Because our journey isn't about being perfect. Whichever way we came, whatever way we're presenting ourselves is perfect right now. It's exactly what you need to be. What you are not yet is complete. You're on a journey toward completion. You're becoming more and more like the creator as you learn more and more about your own inner divinity. So let's go find out how to silence the inner critic by looking at what my guides shared with us. Now, remember, I can absolutely vouch for everything they say because I just needed to use them last week when I screwed up the call. So everything that I channel, I then apply to myself or to one of the people that I work with so that we know that I have accurately heard and transcribed the the information. Every once in a while, I'll need to tweak it, but usually it comes through so beautifully and so perfectly. So if you are having a trouble with a situation, message me. I offer a a complimentary consultation to find out if working with me would help you. If you don't want to do that for whatever reason, look at the blog posts and the YouTube videos that are now up. And you will find 
a free resource for probably anything that you're encountering. Now, because you're not choosing to invest in yourself, you will have to put in more time. You have to either give money or time. There's no substitute. But you can do it. I did it. I didn't have anyone to help me as I was growing in this way. And it took me a really long time. So my job now is to help you speed up your journey to create the relationships that you want in your life and not just to take the relationship that's handed to you and feel badly. I want you to experience joy. And also, if uh, working with me personally doesn't feel right, I also have classes about many, many, many different situations. And those are all pre-recorded. They've been taught and you can still buy them and get the full benefit from them. Or if you find that you took a class and you didn't get everything because uh, you weren't there live and you couldn't ask a question, email me. I will answer, I promise. But back to silencing the inner critic. I am just so excited because I love the fact that we are not here by ourselves. We don't have to figure it out. So here we go. Dear ones, all of you have silent voices in your head. Now, I got to tell you, mine last week were not very silent. I felt like they were yelling, yelling with glee about how they couldn't wait to prove to me that it was really worthless of me to put this time and energy into these calls. So sometimes they're not all that quiet. Those conversations that rebuke or encourage your actions. Yet many of you give ground religiously to the voice of criticism, telling yourself that it's the voice of God there to make sure you're making the correct choice or taking the proper action. This is so important to understand. Just let's stop here for a second. Please understand. God will offer a correction. It's If you're uncomfortable with the word God, substitute whomever is your source of creation. They will offer correction. They do not offer criticism. Criticism is a product of our own making. It's a fear-based product. The creator is love. Correction is love. And you may continue telling yourself it's helping you stay on the straight and narrow or the path that will lead you to eventual success. But we want you to hear the truth with your heart. If God is love, which is all the divine are capable of being, why would they choose to criticize and correct your every thought, word, and deed? Before you answer that you believe this to be loving correction, we must ask you, is this the way you speak in and interact with your own children? Do you bully, berate, and try to intimidate them into making more of themselves? You do not, of course, for you recognize how counterproductive this kind of behavior would be. Now, let's stop for a moment again. We all have no known people parents, perhaps you grew up in a family where there was bullying and berating. Did it feel good? That's got to be your yardstick. If it didn't feel good to be made to feel foolish or small, do not do it to yourself or others. Therefore, why do you believe you can assign this behavior to the infinite intelligence that governs your very existence? Do you not see how perfectly backward that thinking is? Are you now ready to examine your own behavior for similar signs of insanity? Not so you can feel ashamed or even be held accountable, so, but so 
you can finally be free of the critical voice that urges you toward mediocrity at best and doom at worst. I want to ask each one of you, when somebody is telling you you're worthless, do you feel motivated and inspired or do you just want to give up? You, each one of you have a responsibility to yourselves and that includes being the best version of yourself, fulfilling your life purpose and then taking what you've learned and using it to assist others in becoming their best. You get to help another person become their best after you understand how to become your best. Each one of you brought a gift. It will not be the same as mine or another person's. It will be uniquely yours. Find your gift Develop yourself fully, and then you can share. Because before you can help another with any degree of proficiency, you must first learn how to cultivate the divine within yourself. None of you can navigate your life journeys alone, but all of you have God within. And in partnership with the divine, each one of you is able to overcome the inner critic and succeed. Notice they didn't say some of us. They said everyone. When we are talking about the divine, understand that no one is special, but everyone is special. There are no favorites. All are blessed equally. So exactly how can you successfully silence the inner critic? while opening a channel for divine communication? For this to happen effectively, you must engage in three life-changing actions. And here's what I was talking about earlier. I did these right after the inner critic went, became suddenly quite vocal after being silent for quite a long time. And they work. First, you must stop speaking about yourself, others, and even the world around you with any kind of criticism. As you judge, so shall you be judged. Therefore, it's imperative that you change the nature of your conversation. Instead of dissecting others for the content of their characters, their clothing, and their financial status, learn to cultivate the habit of the compliment. Many of you will find it difficult to break the habit of correction. Most of you have lived your lives either being corrected or being the corrector, always with the adage that this is being done for your own good. And now they're calling to mind, earlier I said God is it corrects. I'm, and perhaps that was the wrong word to use because they're now using the word corrector and correction um, in a negative sense. So let us just be clear, if you are being given a new direction by God, it feels warm and loving and uplifting. It can feel a little bigger than you're used to and therefore a little scary, but it never feels like you are being slammed, uh, mimic, um, ridiculed or um, chastised. Now, remember they just told us, stop the critical comments about each other and about ourselves. I used to be, and I thought it was all in fun. I thought it was kind of a joke because technology is not my first line of defense. Not, I am not the greatest technology person Although I'm perfectly adequate, I can certainly get things done. But I used to make jokes about my technological ability. And then I turned the microphone off by mistake. Those comments are gone. I'm never going to hire myself out as the IT person. That would be fraudulent advertising. 
But I have stopped criticizing, condemning, and making fun of my ability to use technology. That was the first thing I had to correct. So, remember, they're asking us to be the observer. When you see a child being told they're smart, cute, beautiful, talented, or some other form of compliment, their unguarded presence expands and shines. It makes you feel good to have them built, have built them up, and it makes them feel good to be told they're worthy. It's a win-win for both sides, and the ebulence created stretches on for miles on either side of the interaction. You can feel the delight, the surge of energy, and the enthusiasm that's being shared. Conversely, when you bring the spirit of criticism or the energy of correction to a child, you watch them wilt and deflate as if they're caving in on themselves. And as surely as you succeed in spreading enthusiasm and joy, you've now taken all of the air out of the room and shared unworthiness or not good enough thereby creating a vacuum of despair. And it's into this vacuum that the inner critic strolls, bringing with them what will become a lifelong acquaintance with not good enough and unworthiness. If you want to break off that relationship, you'll have to stop looking for what you and others are doing wrong and refocus your attention only on what's being done that's right. Now, if you grew up in a highly critical family or a you're never good enough family, which I have had the experience with, you may not realize the insidiousness of this kind of behavior. It will just seem normal to you as will the inner critic shouting at you from every vantage point possible about how you are not quite worthy or not as worthy as the other person. So for you, your job is not to clean up your conversation about other people. Probably you're so wounded by the the conversation you've heard about yourself that you're very good about building others up. But you must really pay attention to what you are saying about yourself. If you have the problem of trying to dissect others to make yourself better, feel better, then clean that up too. Clean it up. I guarantee you this will make a huge change in your life. Start seeing and saying what people, including yourself, are doing well. Second, you'll need to achieve self-mastery. The time has come and gone for any of you to participate in your spiritual journey as children, content to feed from their, their mother's breast. It's imperative that you put aside the playthings of the past and get serious about your spiritual life. Instead of being the thing you'll get to, if there's time, it must become the way you begin and end each day. Up until now, your life may have consisted of a series of excuses, a list of reasons why you cannot impose restrictions on the thoughts you're generating or the behavior you're engaging in. If you want to silence the inner critic and move forward on your spiritual journey, you must stop allowing yourself to make excuses for why something cannot be accomplished. Instead of playing the victim and making a list of all the ways in which you were wronged, which in turn make it why you cannot be successful, learn to look at all that is with gratitude and make a list of why you can. This will be life-changing. However, it requires your complete participation. We've got to understand that the spiritual is not a halfway journey if you want to make progress. 
So you can't say, oh, I'm so powerful, and then go out the door and whine about uh, why is it that nobody wants to work with me or uh, be my friend or I don't. I don't, I'm not sure, but we have to be so careful that we are going in one direction, the positive direction, for as much of the time as possible. You're going to slip. It's okay. In the beginning, you'll have to impose a, sl- a strict discipline. You'll have to set reminders and adhere to a rigid schedule of positive life-affirming behaviors so you can break yourself of the habit of learned negative behavior. Expect that you're going to make some mistakes and slip up in the beginning. Do not fall prey to the, oh, I knew I couldn't do it anyway. Nobody's going to get it in the first day. 21 days to change a habit. A couple of months before it really belongs to you. But once you've learned to be a master of the self, you'll have no desire to return to being a child nursing at its mother's breast, for you'll feel the power of independence and crave even more. You'll recognize just how powerful you are and you'll desire to become even more powerful. Once you recognize all that is possible, you'll never be able to settle for less But because this is the power of the divine, it doesn't come with the ability to corrupt. I know when I was first starting this journey, my biggest fear is that I would turn into someone that I could not admire. Somebody that was um, unloving or um, boastful or uh, um, just arrogant. But as you rise higher, as you gain certainty, your deepest desire will be to share that knowledge with another. Your light cannot be hidden and your enthusiasm will act as a beacon for other seekers. Yet this will not happen for you or anyone else if you give in to the voice of criticism or the voice of laziness that tells you you cannot do it, or that you can do it later. Commit to doing it now and be the star you agreed to come here to be. And yes, you did agree to be a star. That doesn't mean you came to be a movie star, actor, actress. It means you brought something fabulous to share. Third, you must silence the inner critic by proving it wrong. Nothing puts an end to criticism like success. Since each of you are already hardwired for success and each of you has access to a divine partnership, we now charge you to go out and do it. Nothing can prevent your success. You may experience delays. Keep going. You may experience setbacks. Keep going. You may even experience outright failure. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and take the next step. Spend no time blaming yourself or others. You learned why in step one. So immediately begin congratulating yourself for getting up and taking a step. Remember, the more time you spend in criticism, the less time you spend growing, the less time you spend positively applying what you're learning. Now apply disciplined force and take the next step as you were instructed in step two. Stop putting it off, believing that you're not capable. You're more than enough. Practice self-mastery instead of excuses for why you can't And you will have mastered step three, which is to silence the inner critic with success. As you repeatedly look at what you're doing right and congratulate yourself, then demand that that behavior continues even when you want to quit. 
you're creating an expectation. The expectation of greatness, which completely overshadows the inner critic until it slinks away into the shadows, leaving you to bask in the sunshine of accomplishment. I had a question come in saying, you know, what's the best way to silence the inner critic? Do you think this you can this can really happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. I guarantee you you follow these three steps. But be committed and there is will be no room in your heart or your mind for that inner critic to gain a foothold, let alone take up residence or grow roots. So, in the beginning, yes, you're pushing against what you allowed to be created, and yes, you did allow it to be created. You may not have known you had a choice, but even then, you had a choice. So, we gotta take responsibility, even though we didn't know that we could say no to things that we didn't like and we could say yes to the things that we do want. Rather than feel sorry for ourselves, it's better just to say, you know, I am so delighted and so grateful that I know now that I can say no to whatever doesn't feel good and come on in to whatever feels best to me that I can make a mistake and correct it and rise up even higher, that I'm not as, as worthless as my last mistake, that I am as amazing as my next success. Just let go of the mistakes. So what? Learn what you can and move on. So star two to raise your hand if you've got a question or you want to share something that's going on in your life with regard to the inner critic. And let's take a look at what they've shared with us. Because I've noticed in the time that I have been channeling and in other readings that I've, other people's channeled work that I have read, that even though they are they, meaning the the guides, our guides, are certainly trying to make the information easy and accessible. They understand something that is still foreign to us in many ways, and it can feel a little bit hard to get our minds around it. So I just like to go over what they've shared with us. We cannot outrun the voices in our head. I tried it, failed miserably. You can never outrun the voices in your head or pretend that they're not there. But you can learn to work with them. Even that voice of criticism can be manipulated into the voice of the cheerleader when you stop participating in the criticism. Stop paying attention to it, and when that voice comes up, become that discerning observer. Just because someone tells you to do something, you don't have to do it or listen to it. So just because this voice says, you know, just eat rocks and die, there's no reason why you have to follow that information or that suggestion. Just let it go. Don't be so attached to it. And just because someone else is doing something, you're not required to do that either. You must follow your heart. Get used to using your own discernment. Don't follow the pack. Follow your heart. Now, when you're beginning and your heart is filled with fear, trauma, limiting belief, it will be difficult. That's when you need to do the heart work. The clearer your heart, the easier it will be to hear and answer the call of the divine. Do the heart work. With me, through these free materials, through classes, with someone else. 
do the heart work. If it's the voice of the divine, now remember, you're going to, in the beginning, often feel that you cannot discern between the two. So you need a, a way to measure. So if it's the voice of the divine, you will feel loved, honored, almost cocooned by the information that's being shared. <laughs> it will not be. You're stupid. Who, thought, who told you you could do that? You're ugly or any of those things. Completely not true. You will be asked to participate, to take an action, to do something on your own behalf, but you will not be criticized into doing it. The divine doesn't cut you down. They don't criticize you. They build you up. They show you what you're capable of. And then they may say to you, okay, now it's your turn. Get going. We've shown you what you can do. Now, take the brilliance that is you and do something with it. Because that's part of your journey and your growth. But they will never say to you, you are so stupid. We would love you more if you would um, solve this math problem. That's not the divine. That's your inner critic. We also have to remember that none of us are capable of navigating our life journey alone. So a relationship with a creator, whomever you choose that creator to be, is imperative. You didn't get here by chance. You are here on a specific journey in which you want to live to learn certain things. But you only have the tunnel vision provided by what you've brought in to help you on this journey. And God has overarching vision and can see the whole picture and where you're going and is happy to help you acquire that vision. Silencing the inner critic is easy, but you have to fully participate in changing your behavior. We need to remember that nothing they're going to ask us will be beyond our ability to do it. It is always going to be easy. However, the way we approach it can make it very difficult. We can make it seem so impossible that God themselves couldn't do it. Be careful about what, how you're referring to what is going on. Allow it to be easy. Remember, first, stop gossiping about yourself and others. Now, they said more nicely, but I'm going to just say it the way it is between us. Stop gossiping. Stop telling stories about yourself or someone else. In my case, I had to completely, I thought it was hilarious that I didn't have great technological skills and it caused me a great amount of pain to keep that dialogue going. And now I just shut it off. You know what? I don't need to be the butt of a joke in order for you to have a great day. We can find other ways to have a great day. For those of you who are empaths, who are used to making fun of yourself so that another person feels better, time to stop it. Don't use yourself. Don't cut yourself down to make someone else feel better. And vice versa, don't cut someone else down to make yourself feel better. Be, in, be a builder. Be in the construction business, building people up, helping them to construct a healthy self-image. Whenever you feel the urge, to talk about something or someone, including yourself, I want you to stop and take a minute, take a breath. You might even need to put your hand over your heart and choose something that feels good. Pull it back. Pull away from that criticism. 
Choose something that you do well. Choose something they do well. Change the conversation to that. And if you can't find anything, talk about the weather. But get off whatever it was that was bringing the energy down. Picture yourself as the child that's being rewarded or reprimanded. Before you think or speak, ask yourself, how does this feel to my inner child? Are you, yay, oh, I feel so good, I'm so delighted, or are you wanting to turn away and and hide your face because you feel so sad? Don't do that to yourself. Don't do it to another person. All of you empaths that are on your this call, I know you do that to yourselves. Please stop. You're you were way too far in to this ascension. We have we have achieved so much. We have all grown in leaps and bounds. Please stop using yourself as the butt of the joke. Focus on what you or they are doing right. Just let go of anything that is not in line with what's right. I promise you that you will not do things wrong if you're not looking at them. That was one of my big fears is, uh uh-oh, if I'm not correcting everything I'm doing every minute, I might do even more things that are wrong because I'm not uh, being the corrector, the dictator, the criticizer of myself. But then we're forgetting basic law of attraction. What we focus on expands. Why did I ever think that that was appropriate? Because that's what I grew up with. It was a limiting belief that I needed to let go of. Now I focus on what I'm doing right and encourage that in myself and others. And guess what? We do a lot of things right. I hear from the incredible people that I work with about how their lives are changing and growing, about the joy that they're feeling and the love and how it feels like magic. It's not magic. It's the way our life is supposed to be. We're finally stepping into the truthful place of our being and being able to hold that vibration. And hallelujah. Now remember the second part is self-mastery. The reason they are all doing so well is that they are really applying the principles that we are working on, that I am teaching you in these classes, that I am teaching them. Obviously, when I'm working with you personally, we can go into greater depth and I can help you clear out what is specific to you. When it's just a conversation like this, you have to do more of the work, but that's okay. You're perfectly capable. Just remember that as way showers and every single one of you who are on the spiritual journey has come to show others the way. You're also an overcomer. So you are here to lead the way forward and to the light. But you cannot do this unless you are seriously committed. This means you must commit to your own personal journey. So here's something that I want you to do after the call today. Take a moment. Let's use the heart breath. Take a moment and get quiet and calm. And then when you're really present in your body and in your energetic space, get out a piece of paper and a pen and take as much time as you need getting calm You never need to rush. Time is a construct of your own mind. You will always be on time if you allow yourself to flow instead of being in a 
position of resistance. So the more that you line up with the divine, the more time you spend in the highest vibration of love, joy, and peace, the more that you will always be in the right place at the right time without feeling rushed or pushed to get there. You will just be there. So take your time deepening your place, yourself, into quietness, almost as though you're slipping into a meditative state. And then from that place of calm and quiet, I want you to make a list. Make a list of everything you're doing right. And make it quite extensive. <coughs> Don't, excuse me. Don't cheat yourself. A list of everything you're doing right. Even if it is just, I'm remembering to breathe with awareness. I'm spending more time in the present. I smiled at someone today. All of these things are things that you are doing right. So now you have that one list. Now I'd like you to make a list of your talents. What do you do well? Or what things do you like to do? Also in this list, let's include your gifts. Let's put a star next to the things that you're really, really good at. Those things that you came and brought with you a natural talent that many other people don't have for that same thing. And I guarantee you, you will have something. So I don't want anybody sending me an email after the call saying, I'm sure I didn't bring any gifts. You are not looking deeply enough or lovingly enough. I guarantee you, you've brought something wonderful. And then... I want another column of everything you've accomplished. Now, again, you must be loving. I don't want someone writing me an email saying, I have no accomplishments. If you have been kind to anyone in your life, you have accomplished a giving of a gift that is beyond value. Find all those times that you've been kind or that you've done something good for someone else and include those in your list of accomplishments in addition to things that you may have achieved in this lifetime. But always make sure that being a loving and kind person is on your list of accomplishments and qualities. And now... I want you to put that list somewhere that you're going to be able to see it all of the time. Do this when you wake up. I want you to read who you are. It will make you set the tone for your day. You'll feel very proud of yourself, very excited to be who you are. And then I want you to do the same thing before you go to sleep so that you are actively supporting the greatness that is you as you are resting and simply let go of everything else that doesn't feel good. Let go of everything that feels like failure. I don't want to know that you went for nine job interviews, excuse me, you went for 10 job interviews and only one person liked you. We don't care about the nine that you were not, didn't, mesh up well with, get excited about the one that loved you. You only need one. So get excited about that. As you gain self-mastery, you're going to want to share. Do it. Absolutely. Don't wait until you say, well, am I, do I really know this? Is, is there anything that I know that I, of course, of course, if you were able to get up this morning and put a smile on your face, if you feel good about your life, share that with someone. 
you may be the thing they need in order for them to begin their spiritual journey. Sharing and shining is going to come naturally. As you grow even more, people will come up to you and say, I just love being with you. You make me feel so much better. Not because you're doing anything, just because you're being a loving presence. Be that loving loving presence. Because while you're busy shining, you can't focus on what you're doing wrong. It's impossible. Shine, shine, shine. The joy that you create as you shine lifts yourself, lifts others, and the inner critic has to be silent so that the inner cheerleader can come to the forefront. You won't even have to go searching for the inner cheerleader because when you're shining, when you're sharing, when you're feeling good, when you've lifted yourself up because you've looked at someone else and said, how can I serve that person today? And you've smiled at them or shared something nice. That inner cheerleader comes out and says, you go. Good for you. That felt great. Let's do it again. Let's find another person we can encourage. And you get all excited and you grow even bigger and your light is shining even with even more luminescence until you just won't be able to turn it off. But here's the thing that I want everyone to remember. Nothing can happen for you unless you allow it to happen. We all have the wonderful gift of free will, which means we get to choose whether we want to allow something to be true in our lives or not. So if you do not want joy, and I've got a a hand raised, I'll be right with you from Jackson, Tennessee. Just let me finish this one little thought. If you will not give yourself the opportunity, that's okay. Just know that it's your choice. Now, the very last thing they told, shared with us is the best way to shut up anyone up, that inner critic, is to prove them wrong. Nothing is con- going to convert a naysayer into a cheerleader like success. We've all been around the people that told you, oh, I know you can't do it. And then the minute you get there, that oh, I... I I knew you, oh, man, I was certain you had it all along. Just remember, you really do already have what you need to succeed. Your personal divine partnership absolutely guarantees your success as long as you allow it to happen. You do have to take the first step and keep going no matter what obstacles you encounter. You'll never be beaten until you give up. And you don't be, have to be afraid to change lanes. If something isn't working, keep going, but perhaps you need to change your focus until it's in line with where you want to go. Just don't quit. Hold on to the expect, expectation of greatness because it's what you came here to be. You did not come here to be destroyed. You came here to be great. So Jackson, Tennessee, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, so how can we help you? Listen, I love you so much, Marsha. (laughs) Oh, my honey, I haven't heard from you in so long, Jeff. How are you? I know it. We're doing much better since I've met you, by the way. Thank you. But uh, I was wanting to ask you, when you're talking about ways of lining up with your higher self, what are you kind of exactly getting to there for us? You know, what's the takeaway or how can I? manifest this into my my everyday life. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example and then tell me if this is hitting the mark. 
So when I'm in my meditative space, which can just be your quiet space, I it feels as though when I am connecting with that divine source energy, which is above us, that it is placing me in a column of light that is becoming more and more crystal-like as we get further and further into this ascension energy. It used to be, I hate to word, use the word solid, but it was like, it was a, it used to be a little bit heavier. Now, as we are all ascending and the planet is ascending, it's like more angelic in its energetic state. Like, like so a cloud? A it used to feel like a cloud. Now it feels more like little pinpricks of exciting energy, like um, more accessible. So when you're lining yourself up, just take that moment to get quiet, using the heart breath to help you deepen yourself, and then just allow your energy to ascend up so that it connects with the divine, and then bring that connection all the way through you through and down through the bottom of your feet so that you are then connecting with the earth so that you are feeling almost stretched between the two polarities heaven and earth but you're connected solid between both that's beautiful that's beautiful yes oh good because i i feel that sometimes we um when we're not anchored we're mm -hmm. trying we're we're grasping and reaching and we don't and it fe it's too nebulous it it doesn't feel like we can get a hold of the answer so we're grasping at straws when you're kind of in this column or in this tube um it's that warm hug from God. It's that mm. knowing that I am not doing this alone and I was never asked to do it alone. And the thing we need to remember, and especially, I'm so glad you brought this up, Jeff, because right now there is a lot of talk going on about an event and darkness that's coming to the earth and how only certain people are going to be chosen and Am I going to leave my loved ones behind? Please. That is fear mongering and it's not of God. Please don't accept that into your heart. If you understand the divine from your heart, you will understand that the blessings that come forth are pouring forth continuously and without judgment, without condition. It is us that have decided whether or not we will be open to receiving the blessing. So there is no finger pointing, you're good and you get to have a blessing and you're bad and you get off to the side. No, that's not happening. That's something we do. The Bible tells us, and I'm, I don't, I'm not great at the scripture, so bear with me, but it the rain, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Understand that is so perfectly God. There is never a pick and choose. You're good and you're bad. Some people may have developed their relationship with God more than others. They will have better communication because they have developed the relationship. However, the relationship exists for every person and can be developed at whatever speed they choose to go. No one is being held back, singled out, or left behind. It is merely a choice of do I want a relationship that I am actively engaged in or am I choosing to shut the door and stay on the other side. 
With the understanding uh, also, though, we can never shut God out completely. To my negative thinking or sin, you might say, keep me from this uh, this awareness or this consciousness that you're talking about that is a light tube or that that uh that uh, uh higher self could it be that my wrong thinking you know or my self critic say of being critical of myself is that the hindrance, you know, or it's always there for all of us, this presence. But oh, some of a- us yes, be- absolutely. Yes. And yes. It, can it get between you and God? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. absolutely. Mm-hmm. But here's the wonderful thing. When you see that happening, you say, oh, hello there. I need to do some work. You are not welcome in my home. I understand that you've come to distract me and to to put a noose around my relationship with God to try to strangle me from it. But that's not acceptable to me. So let me find all the things that I'm doing right. Let me get really serious about uh, my walk with God and my and and spending time with the divine and being this shining beacon of light and let me get really excited about everything I've been able to accomplish and you will feel that stranglehold just loosening and then expanding and expanding and expanding is oh. when my inner critic was telling me, you are so stupid. See, there was no God in that. In that. Right. But luckily, I had channeled the blog post about the, I said, wait a minute, I've got a way to fix this. Let me. What did they tell me? Oh, yeah, I can't let that voice take over. Let me get real here and recognize I can be in charge of what my brain says and does. It's not in charge of me. I'm in charge of my thoughts. That's beautiful. Thank and you. One more thing, and yes. I again thank you for your brilliance. When we say my sin is keep separating me from God, yes. please yes. please understand. Nothing can cut you off from God completely. Not even you could go out and murder the entire town. And you would still be accepted and loved by God. Sin is not an action that you take that God sees as shameful. It is negative thinking that we engage in that makes us believe that we can separate from God. That's right. That's right. So anytime someone... Yeah. Yeah. Anytime someone says to you, you're a sinner, they may not understand the word, the true interpretation is you may be engaging in a behavior that is shrinking your God connection and you really need to stop so it that's, can expand. That's that's my wrong thinking, you know, or the, the inner <laughs> critic. That yes. inner critic is always after me trying to make me smaller. Mm-hmm. And if I let that overpower me, I'm letting it come between me and this wonderful experience of light or cloud or 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 tube, however you explain your relationship with God that brings you to that higher power, you know. So, yeah, it's your attitude, I guess. And that's that's one of my big biggies, you know. Well, it's one of, for all of us, It we were not, in this Western culture, we were not raised in the atmosphere of, you're wonderful, be magnificent. We were all told, be less, because God does not like a boastful child. 
And you know what? Who thought that up? That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrible. You know, when I used to teach, I would tell them they were beyond brilliant. They were amazing. And I would manipulate the circumstance so they would get the answer right until they learned how to do it and they could get the answer right on their own. And every single one of them started performing above grade level because they believed in themselves. Now, I didn't know what I was doing then. I didn't have my God connection strengthened to the point that I have it now. But it just felt good because I felt so... I had been belittled. Yes, and I had been belittled so much, and I just couldn't imagine doing that to another person. And so they would shine, and then I would shine, and then they would shine some more, and then I would just... We were just glowing with joy over their oh, their joy. That's beautiful. So that's what I want us to do. Find the the thing that you can say to someone else that will bring them joy and get excited about their reaction. And it just it's the pay it forward process. It it just goes and grows and gets bigger and bigger and you will not be able to contain it and you shouldn't it's Hmm. just god in action and as you give joy to others or share your light your connection automatically grows it's the easy if you want to be a if you want to do it the lazy way just love just be loving. Just run up to people yeah. and tell them how wonderful they are. And that's the easiest <laughs> way to, to grow possibly. Mm. The hard way is to, you know, get out the whip and, oh, look yeah. at this. I didn't do it right today. Yeah. So what? You know, so what? What did I do right today? If that's all you can remember, what did I do right today? That's beyond brilliant. That oh. will get you further it is so hard to think of what you've done right make a list make a list make a list say like when i was pulling in my driveway today all this negative stuff was on my mind and for some reason i cannot think of one thing that i've done right you know I, it's just, I don't okay. know what to think about that. Well, let's get started on your list. First of all, you raised your hand and it helped hundreds of other people realize, oh my gosh, God loves me. You also brought this point forward of how difficult it can sometimes become to get off of the negative And that brings forward another thing. Each one, teach one. Everybody help the other person. If you're on this call today, make sure you go up to another person and tell them how wonderful they are or something good about themselves. And Jeff, I'm going to tell you, I think you are one of the most magnificent people I have ever met. And that's not just because we work together. It's because you are a light always a light. I cannot remember a conversation that I've had with you when you were not thinking about what you could do or be for someone else, from the nursing home to the music to the church to your work, always. Always. Now, here's what you can do. Yes. When you have a good thought, Get a a record app on your phone. When you have a good thought, when you think, hey, you know, I'm really great at uh, playing this particular guitar style or, wow, that really made me feel good. When you have those good thoughts, record them so that when you have the bad thoughts, you can play it back and remember and get yourself out of that funk just (laughs) in case there's no one around. But Today, I challenge everyone, go 
be the angel for someone else so they that you will call to you an angel when you need it anywhere you go be the one who says you look so lovely today or whatever else comes to mind be the encourager start that chain of encouragement because it is so difficult at times to hang on to what we're doing right and honestly jeff when mother god came to me and said you are not allowed to focus or think or speak about what you're doing wrong i thought i was going to lose my mind it had been my entire identity and i was shaking with fear because i was sure that i was going to start doing everything wrong because i wasn't focused on how can i correct it if i'm I'm not dissecting it. Wow, yeah. It was the most wonderful thing that ever happened, the scariest probably thing that ever happened to me, and I've had some pretty intense uh, negative things happen, uh, and the most liberating thing that ever occurred because I suddenly realized the truth to that law, law of attraction uh, principle, which was I was bringing the things to do wrong because I was focused on them. Mm-hmm. And when I started looking at what I was doing right, I started attracting more situations in which I could perform well. So while I'm focused on how bad I am at technology, I immediately screw up because I'm not paying attention. And it's not something I do well innately. I have to pay attention. (laughs) So when I'm not paying attention and I'm busy thinking how stupid I am, I rise to the stupid level. When I am feeling great about me, when I'm concentrating on what I do well, I automatically attract someone or something that I do well, where I can be of value and be of service. And then I feel even better and I attract the next situation and so on and so on. So get out your recorder, record all of the times that you've given a compliment, that you have been that light in the darkness and play it back for yourself or record yourself playing one of your favorite melodies and say to yourself, this is me. I'm making this beautiful music. I'm taking myself to this new place of, of rapture and everyone around me that hears it can go with me. I'm just that valuable. Whoops, and somehow you got muted. <laughs> Sorry about oh, I'm that. I'm muted, yes. Oh, you muted you. Okay. I muted myself, yes. Uh-huh. Well, listen, okay. you are a shining star of positive flow or positive energy to us. And thank we you. just want to thank you because it's, it's, it's changed my life. It's transformed my life. And just our conversation today was transforming, absolutely. And it's just amazing to be a part of of the team here, I guess, is what you want to call it. So we thank are, you, Marge. We are a team, and everyone is so, so valuable and necessary. So please understand, there are no... Um, unimportant members of this team. Everyone is so valuable. Jeff, I receive that and I thank you and you're making me cry as you always do with your incredibly kind and loving words. I want you to receive it as well. Thank you. It's and so we love you. to slip we love. into negative, but you're bigger than that. You're wiser, yeah. you're stronger, you're smarter, you're tougher. 
Yep. And I know a little bit about what you've been through, so I know you're tougher than that. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you dare let that get a hand on handle. But that that inner critic, he's a strong fella. Not anymore, fella. because now you have three yeah. life changing actions that you can take. That's right. That will absolutely stop it. And I tell you, you got to find mm-hmm. that you got to stop giving the inner critic. Uh, credit. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't um, acknowledging the inner critic, but I was heavily engaged in I'm so stupid conversations. Mm -hmm. I want you to stop engaging in the inner critic is powerful. No, the the inner cheerleader is amazing and powerful and truthful. Take your mind off the inner critic. They, it no longer exists. It no longer has. It remember it can only have the power you give it. So mm-hmm. take away its power by taking your focus away from it and putting it onto everything you do right, mm-hmm. and getting really serious about staying focused on what you do right. No crit when you realize. Gee, I'm having a negative thought. Good for me. I recognized I'm thinking negatively. What can I think about that's positive? Uh, let me put on my recorder and hear right. something. <laughs> <laughs> so right. even when we catch ourselves in the wrong direction, it's not, oh, my gosh, look what I did. It's, oh, my gosh. I'm so amazing. I caught myself. I stopped myself from running away down the path of no return. I'm so amazing. That's how you turn it around. Because that success is going to just, there will be no room for no space being held for the inner critic. It will all be taken up by the inner cheerleader. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I miss you. Miss all you. right, everyone. You. <laughs> we are way over our time. Just want you all to know that there are many, many, many free resources in the blog, on the YouTube uh calls that I, these calls that I put to YouTube later, uh, I'm also looking at changing this into an actual radio show. So here's something uh, I want everyone to think about. It will have advertising. If you feel that you have a service or you know of our product or you know of someone that has a service or a product that would benefit from being advertised on a spiritual podcast channel that has 5 million viewers a month, then please message me. Okay. It's Marsha at Marsha Martin, the heart healer. I love you all. Oh, that's Marsha spelled M-A-R-C-I-A, Marsha Martin, the heart healer.com. I love you all. And until next Wednesday, I'm sending you all my love.